At 3.41 a.m., just minutes after the blaze erupted, officers of the FDNY arrived at the scene. As the firefighters hosed the entry and hallway of the club, on the steps they saw several charred bodies. The victims, black and Hispanic immigrants in their late teens and early twenties, were piled towards the door. These people had been stampeding for the fire-enveloped exit, which raised the possibility that the blazing doorway had been the only way in or out. More bodies were scattered on the first floor barroom floor. The men began pulling these victims on the first floor out one by one. Their number soon reached 19. This was very bad. But not as bad as it could be, they told themselves. Fires happen in the Bronx all the time. Such incidents as this had become sadly commonplace over the years, but they had yet to discover the scene on the second floor. The men began to ascend the steps of the narrow wooden staircase in single file. As they emerged into the darkened room, they noticed a strange feeling under their feet. There were piles of stuff on the ground, clothing and discarded purses and other personal effects. But that wasn't all. No, it it wasn't just clothing they were tripping over. They were standing and stepping on bodies. One of the officers let out an anguished cry. Oh, no! The room, small, dim, and windowless, was packed with dead bodies. Everywhere the men pointed their flashlights, they saw bodies piled one on top of the other. In some areas, the bodies were piled four deep. Once the room was cleared of smoke, the full horror was revealed, so terrible that some of the men vomited. The club had been filled with underaged kids. Many of the victims were little girls, teenagers, dressed in their best party clothes. Their bodies were not burnt in the slightest. They had died long before the fire could reach them. They had seemingly died in seconds, not minutes. Gas or asphyxiation had claimed them at an unfathomable speed. Some had died still clutching their glasses. They had died seated at the tables. They had died clawing at their throats. The scene was paralyzing, FDNY Assistant Chief Frank Nastro later said. We stood there numbed. No one spoke. There were 69 bodies spread about this 24 by 50 foot area. They all could have been sleeping. Later, when questioned by the press, the firemen would strain to find appropriate analogies for the surreal scene of carnage. For while a fire had surely taken the victims, these did not look like any fire victims they were used to seeing and many of the men, confronted with what appeared more like a room stuffed with mannequins, wondered how it could even happen. Pompeii, Hiroshima, a Nazi gas chamber were some of the words they used. Sixty-nine bodies in a single small room, frozen in time. 